Big wave surfing is an awe-inspiring spectacle, reserved only for the boldest and bravest of surfers. It involves paddling or being towed by jet ski into waves measuring at least 20 feet tall on surfboards known as guns. Ireland, where the raw power of the North Atlantic crashes into its ragged coastline, and where waves have been known to reach up to 60 feet in areas such as Mulligmore Head, County Sligo, and Aileen's at the base of the Cliffs of Moher, County Clare, was the perfect spot. The nature of growing up here, and like literally from, from the window, I'm, like you can see Mulligmore Headland. <laughs> so there's no escaping it when big wave surfing started to arrive in Ireland. So when I was 13, I remember sitting in my bed in Castle Rock, and my brother Andrew's in his bed, and we'd somewhere got this video and we were watching a surf movie called Monster Mavericks and it was about these guys in California at this big wave spot called Mavericks which is world famous now for having some of the biggest and scariest waves in the world and I actually said the words and I remember saying them I want to do that someday and Andrew looked at me and went no you don't want to do that no way you don't want to do that but I always wanted that in my you know throughout my teens that's what I wanted to do and we did it we surfed Mavericks and surf really big scary waves probably the biggest we surfed but what happened was it made me realise that those waves existed here. So I came back here with this fire inside me thinking I wouldn't do this in this country. There were several key figures at the forefront of this new, exciting way of taking on the waves in Ireland. These included Richie Fitzgerald, Eski Britton, Al Minnie, John McCarthy, Neil Britton and Peter Conroy, many of whom were first featured in a film called Wave Riders. My very first experience was 2007. They were filming the the documentary Wave Riders. And I got a phone call from Chris Malloy telling me to come down to the Cliffs of Moher and they were going to have a session there. Um, and my intention really was to just go. I'd never, I hadn't seen a break yet. They'd been surfing it for about a year. And um, my intention was just to go and have a look <laughs> and not surf it. <laughs> but then all the elements kind of came together. Some of the, you know, the best, most experienced surfers and, and watermen in the lineup and um, just kind of sure, why not? <laughs> so the first go, um, Dylan Stott, um, another big wave surfer who's based here, was the driver and he towed me in. And I couldn't understand anything he was saying. So I just held on like death grip onto the tow rope and didn't let go at all. So we did this, this full loop, <laughs> never got the wave. And then I was like, okay, the next one. <laughs> but yeah, that moment, as soon as I let go of the tow rope and got my first wave at a place like Aileen's at the Cliffs of Moher, I, I was like completely hooked. As I go over that ledge and I get to my feet, I think all the focus that I had on all these different things which are affecting me and I'm thinking about the wind here and the waves here and you know, what if I fall, what if this and blah, blah, blah. It just all disappears and you're in the moment then, you're only thinking about riding your board and the, the awareness of even sound disappears. You rarely even hear the wave break and it's very, very unusual for me to hear the wave go I can only think of it as in a couple of instances actually. And Portugal one um, and Aliens another one. Can't declare. I can actually hear it exploding. Most of the time, it's complete. It's almost like tunnel vision. Um, I don't hear much. I can see, um, and I'm only aware of things that literally come in my sort of close to me. It's weird. Surfing these colossal waves is not for the faint-hearted. It's extremely dangerous, and its crucial surfers are always aware of the threats they face. They manage the danger by undergoing rigorous specialist training, and relying heavily on their team. You need a team. Uh, it seems like a real solo pursuit, even even the paddling, uh, but it's not because you really, in terms of the training, learning, um, especially in those early days with tow surfing, you need a tow partner. Basically the way we do it out there, most places now is we run two jet skis and the rescue driver drives behind the tow team. So if you're on rescue, if the, if the surfer fell, the, the tow driver on the jet ski, the driver of the jet ski in front, it's his, his priority to get the surfer. It's his responsibility. If he misses him, the rescue guy is right behind you and he can then sweep him up. So you've got two chances to rescue somebody before they're into the cliffs or up the beach. You know you shouldn't be there, but you want to catch one of these things. So you, so you're, you're, it's almost like your heart is trying to make you do it. Your head doesn't want you to do it. So you're kind of, one thing's pulling you to get out of the way. One thing's making you sit there. And in the middle of it, there's this stubborn wee guy inside me going, don't you move, you're staying here. 
and you're going to turn around, you're going to catch this thing. So the fear is there all the way through from days in advance, right up literally to the very last minute you go over that ledge and go, it's incredible. And then it's a, it's like a release afterwards. It almost feels like a breath hold, like a riding the wave is like a space in between an inhalation and exhalation. And it isn't until afterwards when you get like spat out onto a channel that it all kind of comes flooding in, all the feeling. So when I'm actually riding the wave, it's hard, hard to process. I'm not, I guess I'm just riding the wave. I'm not feeling or thinking anything. And then you've survived, which is a nice feeling too. <laughs>